it's seven o'clock in California, and I can tell you the heavens have opened again, and it's raining. We're going to have a bountiful spring and summer in California, which will enrich all of the world. So, I love that. So thank you for your kind introduction. It's a delight to be with you again. And to orientate people a little bit, I'm a medical doctor, a rheumatologist. I look after people with chronic inflammation. And, you know, in medicine, our education is centered on the body. And in session number one with you, we decided body is very small part. It's an incomplete picture of what we are. We're multidimensional. And we're also part of nature. Okay. And when we work with the laws of nature, we open up vast reserves of power. And if we really ask the question, what is underlying all processes in nature? It's energy. Energy is universal currency, if we use money language. So energy is the raw material for healing and the raw material for all of nature to evolve and grow. So I asked myself when I was a medical doctor in academics, what really drives healing, true healing, which is not just drug-based, but reach, really embraces this multidimensional being and really honors the laws of nature. And then I came across William Tiller's work. William Tiller is very unusual. He was a professor of physics at Stanford University. And for many years- And you, worked, you, you studied at Stanford or you worked at Stanford? How did you, how did you come across him? It's a very yes. interesting story yes, as well. Yes, yes. So I was at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota and I really wanted to get into the energy systems of the body, the biofield. And William Tiller wrote some of the seminal papers. In He was a physicist publishing in medical journals now you know which is which is not usual uh way right for physicists it's to publish very unusual work. because melon remember medical education is centered on the body things that we can see and measure the the energy system is invisible i can't see it in my dissection so already you can see if it's invisible it doesn't exist so it's sort of there, but it's brushed aside. So when I came in, um, when I knew that energy systems are important, I needed to get into the science of it. And Tiller was my opening door because he gave meaning to it. He's coined the term subtle energy. Subtle is not subtle. It's just, it's invisible. You can't measure it or see it with traditional scientific instruments. Millen, we're only as good as our scientific instruments or tools of investigation. That's really important because we keep on saying, science is everything. Well, science is only as good as our instruments. So Tiller gave meaning to subtle energies and he published in medical journals. So I was very lucky to stumble upon his science. Nisha, I'm just curious. Um you know, usually people who talk about energy, energy healing, refer to as woo, right? Mm -hmm. So was, do you know if he, when he published his work, was he, uh, how was he uh, um, treated? How was he labeled? Was he like a woo-woo scientist or actually there was uh, um, authentic interest in his work right away when he published? Do you know this? Yes, I do. So let's dispense with this whole notion, woo woo, because you're talking about a physicist who has the most high scientific education, equations, mathematics, rigorous in A and B and C. He understands materials. He was a materials scientist and experts, world's experts. So he had published hundreds, if not thousands of papers with patents under his name. And he was at Stanford University for 30 or 40 years. So you're talking about a very excellent mind, but here's the thing, here's the thing. 
Not only did he do conventional science, he was a meditator. He was an inner developed human being. So you have an excellent mind, but the mind was also very open to this immense universe and nature. Do you see? You're bridging science and you're bridging the inner teacher. So he actually wrote that when you do Tai Chi and Qigong and meditation, you feel something inside. You can't just say it doesn't happen. So when I first did Qigong, I could feel energy and play with it in between my hands and I could move it with my intention. But here's the thing that Tiller did. He said, okay, I can feel these energies in my body. Can we quantify this? Then you're talking science. Now you can quantify, put a number on it. You're a scientific protocol. So he did something very interesting. You're about to say a question. Yeah, I have, uh, yeah, it's, it, I don't know, question, <laughs> comment. Um, when I started doing Qigong a long time ago, like mm -hmm. I, I was fortunate to be introduced when I was uh, studying my yoga certification and uh, as mm -hmm. a teacher. And I was introduced to Qigong, and that was the first time when I actually experienced this invisible uh, energy. And I was like, it would be so cool if someone could measure it. Mm -hmm. I did not know about this uh, this physicist that actually was uh, working on this. It, yes. I still didn't know that it's, it's someone actually measured this. So I'm, I'm so excited to hear.